Hi, today we will walk through how to administer the SAM utilizing the scoring available in Google Drive and on Google Sheets. What you see now is the SAM document that you are familiar with. This PDF includes the items, implementation descriptors, endnotes, and suggested evidences. When you facilitate the self-report of MTSS implementation at the school level, this is the document that school teams will receive ahead of time and should be referring to throughout the SAM administration. As the facilitator, you will have access to a scoring version of the SAM that will record the school's responses. We're utilizing Google Drive and Google Sheets for the scoring version of the SAM. Um, utilizing the scoring version is the only way to get an implementation level and a percentage of implementation for your SAM administration. You will receive a link to a practice file and a link to an LEA file. These files have been set up for each LEA and now we'll take a tour of how to use them. So when you get um, the link to a file, you'll either type in the link or click on the link and you'll receive a screen that looks like this. The biggest thing you'll need to remember here is to either click on the blue button that says open in Drive or add to my Drive. You won't be able to utilize any of the files without adding them and opening them in a Google Drive. So I'm going to do that now. Once you add to your Drive, you'll see the name of the folder will either be um, your LEA name or a practice name. So right now I'm in the Practice West Cohort 2 SAM folder. Um, so you may see a folder similar to that soon or one that has your own LEA. And inside that folder will be um, a second folder that has resources. There'll be a list of school administration sheets for the number of schools in your district and a district level sheet that will aggregate your school results. So let's first take a look in the resource folder. In the resource folder are several items. Um, the first thing we'll take a look at is a copy of um, the SAM PDF. So this is the same version of the SAM that um, you've looked at before in PDF version. We just put a copy in here in case you didn't have it um, in five or six other places. There's also a copy of the SAM infographic, so we'll take a look at that. And this is useful to share with schools to help them understand the purpose and administration of the SAM. You can print this on one page and it prints very nicely. There's also a, a document that has a link to a five minute um, video of the SAM administration and overview for schools. So you'll be sharing this with schools before you go in and do your SAM administration. Let's click on this link and watch a minute of the video. Hello. This screencast is meant to give you a short introduction to the self-assessment of MTSS implementation, or the SAM, and its use in North Carolina. As you'll see on this infographic, the SAM stands for the Self-Assessment of MTSS Implementation. It is currently in its second edition. It was originally developed in Florida, but has undergone a national pilot for use nationwide. In addition, the SAM was validated for use in North Carolina by a special panel of implementers across the field. When we first think about the SAM, it is important to think about what it is and what it is not. First off, what it is, is just an implementation fidelity tool to look at how school level and district level personnel are implementing the critical components of a multi-tiered system of support. The purpose of this is to identify and prioritize steps to further implementation of MTSS. What it is not, is it for use as compliance or an evaluative measure of schools? So you can see that um, screencast is available for you in the resource folder. The next um, document that we have in the resource folder is a Google presentation. 
Um, this contains each item and any corresponding endnotes. So we'll take a minute to open this. You may find this useful um, when administering or facilitating the SAM. You may want to project this so um, school teams can see each item that you're discussing and any of the related endnotes in one place. Um, so you'll see each item is on a slide and then the related endnotes. It might just be a little less cumbersome than um, projecting the PDF document. Finally, in the resource folder, there's a document that will assist you in planning for communicating and administering the SAM um, at schools. So this document you can use to record your plans for administration, um, any plans you have for scheduling and timing with the schools, um, how you'll be communicating with the schools. There's also a checklist at the end of this document that will give you some ideas of what are the things you need to do um, to prepare for administration, during administration, and after administration of the SAM. So those are the resources um, in your resource folder that you'll use in order to plan for your administration and support your um, facilitation of the SAM. Also in your um, folder, you'll see, so that was the planning folder that we were just in. And then the next thing we have are the school level scoring sheets. So this, um, in your folder, there will be a number of school sheets that corresponds to the number of schools in your LEA. For each school, um, you'll need to do a little bit of work. You'll need to open each sheet. I'll show you how to do this now. So I'm in school one, and you'll need to rename the school sheet um, by the actual names of the schools in your district. So I'm going to um, rename this one the West School. Um, that's the file name. And then I'll also need to make sure I rename this school a little bit further down in um, cell A25, the West School. So I'll need to make sure that the names are the same of the file name and the school name um, in the file. You'll see also on um, the school sheet that that cover sheet I just scrolled through looks very familiar. It has the same um, information as the cover sheet on the SAM. And then a little bit further down, you're able to enter some in information. You can enter your district name. Um, we just entered our school name. You can enter the name of any um, person who is there to facilitate the SAM the team members present, and then the date that you actually completed the SAM. Um, so I'll enter a date there for our date of completion. You'll see below um, that there are tabs corresponding with each domain or critical component in the SAM. Um, when you facilitate the SAM with the school, you'll use these tabs to actually enter your scoring. So when you see enter the leadership tab, um, you will see each item, those suggested supporting pieces of evidence, um, and then the levels of implementation. The difference in this format is you see all those um, things that the school sees on their PDF, but there are also numbers associated with each level of implementation. So when a school team decides on a level of implementation for each item, you'll record that score in the score column. So for example, for item number one, if we have a principal who um, communicates a vision for MTSS and participates in professional development um, and actively supports the leadership team in MTSS to build capacity um, and really actively engaged in problem solving, that school would likely decide their implementation fits the opti optimizing description um, and you would record a score of three in that cell. And so that's where the scoring records. Um, there's also a cell on e for each item where you can record any notes um, or evidences for that item. So I might type in here, um, the principal attends all team meetings and has made MTSS a part of the school improvement 
plant. That um, those cells are optional for you um, if you just want to put some notes in there. So now that you know how to administer and score the SAM, um, let's look, dig a little bit deeper. Once we have a score here, if we enter each item, we'll see at the bottom, we'll get a percent implemented um, and then a level of implementation. So let's dig a little bit deeper into a file that already has um, data entered. So we're going to take a look at a district that I've named the North Carolina ACC District. Um, and you can see in this file that I've renamed all of our schools with the names of um, the North Carolina ACC team. So we have a Duke, an NC State, a UNC, um, and a Wake Forest. And then we have our district sheet, which um, we saw in our other folder. And so that district sheet I've renamed to be the ACC district sheet. So let's take a look again at a school file. So the Duke School SAM. We see again our cover sheet. And we'll add our date of completion. And you can see here I already renamed my school. And then if you take a look in the, under the leadership tab, um, there's scores entered for each item. So we've already scored that domain. Um, you can see the percent implemented, and then that, um, that records an initially implementing level. So um, that scores have been entered for all, ex all domains except for communication and collaboration. So we can take a little bit closer look at how that scoring works. So in communication and collaboration, there, um, there are only four items. And you'll remember from the Google on Air and reading about the SAM, um, that during the leveling study, many items on the SAM must be considered at the optimizing level in order to receive a description of fully implementing. So you can see these items throughout the SAM um, in your scoring sheet because they have gray bands across the scoring. So that's how you know it's one of those um, required items to be optimizing. So in communication and collaboration, if we were sitting with the school team and they gave us an optimizing score um, on all four items, we would see that that would give us that level of fully implementing. Um, to show you a little bit how the scoring works, you see that this um, item number 20 has that, that gray band. So we know that that's one of our sort of non-negotiable items. So if the school team instead scored themselves operationalizing, you can see that our score would drop from that fully implementing to not implementing. Um, so that scoring happens in the background and it was set during the leveling study. So all of that scoring happens for you. Um, those items that are considered our non-negotiable or the items that must be at optimizing, that scoring is weighted behind the scenes. So you can see how that works. We'll go ahead and give that a fully implementing. So once there's um, their scores in each domain, let's take a look at um, what reports we have available at the school level. So if we scroll over, you'll see after each domain, um, there's a summary report, summary by item, and summary by descriptor. So if we click into the summary report, um, we can see for each school, it's gonna have the school name and the date of administration. It's gonna give us a chart that um, contains each critical component the level of implementation, and that percentage of implementation. So you can see here, that domain we just scored of communication and collaboration, um, we received that descriptor of fully implementing. Below that is um, a graph that has the, the summary of, that, of those scores. You can select um, print straight from Google. Um, and if you leave all the settings the same and click choose print, you'll see that this report will actually print on one page for you. So you could print this report and give it to the school. The next report is um, the summary by item. So this is also um, a, level, a school level report for that school. This one happens to be Duke and we have our date of administration. Um, you'll see here that we have each domain, the actual item content, the score that you entered, and then the descriptor that goes along with that score. So were they emerging? 
operationalizing or optimizing. Um, under each domain, we have that percent of implementation and then that implementation level. So that report gives a nice summary of all 39 items and the scores for each one. Um, again, if you choose print for this report and leave all the settings as they are, um, that will give you a report that will that will print on two pages. So you could print that front and back for schools um, to use. And then the third um, school level report that we have is the summary by descriptor. So this report is going to um, take each item from the SAM and put them underneath what the school rated themselves. Um, so we didn't have any items that were rated not implementing um, at Duke School, but we had some items that were rated emerging developing. So you can see the item number and the item content. Um, this report you can use at the school level to help plan for what are the next steps in administration, I mean, um, in implementation. We might want to take a look at these items, and these are places we might want to focus some effort. Um, again, for schools, if you just um, choose print and leave the settings the same, um, this rep report will print on either one sheet or two sheets. So those are the school level reports. Again, you'll have scored all the, um, all the domains and then you have those three school level reports. Um, you'll have one of those for each of the schools you administer the SAM. So let's see how that interacts with the district level report. So once you administer at the school level, you can open up your district level sheet um, and you'll see here that those school sheets that I had named um, fall under um, this school label. So there'll be as many schools as you have in your district. I only have four schools in my ACC district, but if you'll scroll down, you'll have as many schools as you have um, in your district. Um, you'll have the date of administration for each of those schools and then a summary of um, each of the domains. Those individual scores will populate into a chart above that have the district average for each domain. So you see each critical component or domain and then the district um, percentage of implementation. Also in this sheet, there's a district results graph if you want to um, take a look at your results that way. And then there are two planning templates you can utilize for the SAM responses in your district. The district plan of action gives your district implementation average by domain or by critical component, you can see here. And then it gives areas for you to record your goals for implementation, um, any plans for professional development, coaching, any resources you'll need, and the staff involved. Um, this sheet will calculate a recommended unit of support for you, um, either at the district level, so all schools, um, if the average implementation in the district is below 80%, or it'll recommend that you think about supporting individual schools in that area um, if your district implementation is above 80%. Um, you may recognize that 80% heuristic implementation guideline for core, or in this case, our district support. And our district planning form 2 gives that same averaged information, um, so the percentage of implementation um, and that recommendation for implementation support. And it gives you the option to plan for um, the different levels of support, core, supplemental, and intensive, or do we really need to um, do readiness work in this area? All right, so that's the district aggregate sheet. You can see that, again, all the schools are going to populate in there. I know you're anxious to get your hands on these files and begin working with the SAM, but just remember when you um, get your link, you're going to want to make sure that you either type or click on the link and then you make sure you click on that blue um, icon that says open in drive or add to my drive before you use the folder.